In this video, I will show you how to use Entity Framework in ASP.NET Web application using Visual Studio 2022. So I will show you how to integrate Entity Framework using two different approaches, the code first approach and the database first approach. In the code first approach, we need to create the DB context class that allows us to connect to the database and we need to create the domain models that describe the database tables. Then, using Entity Framework, we need to generate the corresponding database tables. In the database first approach, we need to create the database tables first. Then, using Entity Framework, we need to generate the DB context class and the domain models. Now, let's create a solution with two projects. One project to test the code first approach and one project to test the database first approach. So here we can select all projects, then all project types, and here let's type blank solution. So we have this blank solution, let's select it, then next, let's give it a name, then create. Now the solution has been created, let's add two projects to this solution. So here let's select C sharp. Then for the type, we can select web. Then we can select ASP.NET Core Empty. Then next. Let's call this project EF Code First. We can select the latest version of the .NET Framework and also we can check this box to use HTTPS. Then let's create the second project. Let's select ASP.NET Core Empty, then Next. Let's call it EF Database First, then Next, then Create. Now let's create a new database, so we can use Server Explorer, or also we can click on View, then Server Explorer. Then let's create a new connection. So here we need Microsoft SQL Server, if you don't have it, we can click on Change, then Microsoft SQL Server, then OK. So the server is installed on my machine, so here we can just write dot. Then let's create a new database called EFDB1. So here let's write EFDB1, which is the name of the new database. Then OK. So this database does not exist and we need to create it, so let's click on Yes. So now the database has been created and we have a new connection. Let's expand it. Let's expand tables. And for the moment it is empty. So now we need the connection string that allows us to connect to this new database. We can make a right click on this connection, then properties. And let's copy the connection string. Let's add it to the first project, which is the code first project. So let's open the app settings file. Then here, let's create a new key. Let's call it connection strings. Then let's define a new connection string. We can call it default connection, for example. Then let's paste the connection string. So because we will use entity framework, we need to add a new parameter to this connection string. So let's add semicolon, then trust server certificate equal true. Now let's do the same thing in the second project, so we can copy all of this. Let's save the file and let's close it. Let's go to app settings of the second project and let's paste the code. Let's save the file and let's close it. Now let's install the entity framework packages, so we can install them either individually for every project or also we can install them for the two projects simultaneously. So here we can make a right click on the solution, then manage NuGet packages for solution, then browse. And because we will use Entity Framework to connect to an SQL Server database, we need to install the Entity Framework Core SQL Server package. So here we can write EF like Entity Framework SQL Server. Let's select this package. Let's select the two projects, then install, then OK, then I accept. 
So now it is installed correctly. Now we need to install the second package, which is Entity Framework Core Tools. So here let's write EF Tools. Let's select this package and let's install it for the two projects. Then OK. Then I accept. Now the package has been installed correctly and if we scroll down we can see that it allows us to use these commands on the package manager console. Now let's integrate entity framework using the code first approach. So let's go to the first project and we need to create the DB context class that allows us to connect to the database. This class is a service because it will be used by other classes. So let's create a new folder. And let's call it services. Then let's create the DB context class. Let's call it application DB context. So this class extends the DB context class of entity framework. So just here we have to add colon then DB context. Let's add the namespace. Then let's create the constructor of this class that allows us to configure the base class. So to configure the base class, we need an object of type DB context options. Let's call it options. And let's provide it to the base class. So this is all for this file. Now we need to add this class to the service container and we need to configure it to use SQL Server and to use the connection string that we added to appsettings.json. So let's go to the program.cs file. Then just here we have to call builder.services.addbcontext. And between brackets we have to define the type, which is the application DB context class. Then to configure this application DB context, we can provide this method with an arrow function. This arrow function requires a parameter, we can call it options. Then we need to configure this parameter to use the SQL server. So here let's write options dot use SQL server. Then between parentheses we can either provide the connection string or the name of the connection string that we added inside appsettings.json. So here we can provide a string. Let's add the parameter name which is the name of the connection string. Then we need to provide the name of this key which is connection strings. Let's paste it here, then colon, then the name of the connection string, which is default connection. So now application DB context class is configured correctly and is added to the service container. This means that any other class can request it from the service container. Now let's save this file and let's close it. Now let's create the domain models that describe the database tables. So in this video, I will show you how to create only one domain model. So let's create a new folder. Let's call it models. Then let's create a new class. Let's call it product. So this domain model describes the product table in the database. So we need to create public properties that correspond to the different columns of the products table. So first we need the product ID. Then we need the product name. We can initialize it to an empty string. Then let's add the brand, the category, the price which is of type decimal, the description and created at which is of type date type. And to limit the length of these columns in the database, we can decorate them with some attributes. So for the name, let's decorate it with max length. Let's set the maximum length to 100 characters, for example. Let's copy this and let's use it to decorate the brand, the category. The price is of type decimal, so let's decorate it with the precision attribute. 
we can provide the description with the maximum length so we don't need to decorate it now to create the products table in the database we need to add a new property in application db context that corresponds to this domain model so here let's create a new property it is of type db set and between brackets we have to provide the domain model that we created so the name of this property will be the name of the table in the database so we can call it products so here we can see that we have an error we need just to add the namespace now let's save the files and to create the database tables using the code first approach we need to create migration files that allows entity framework to create the database tables so now we can go to package manager console that we have just here or also we can go to tools then nuget package manager then package manager console so because we have two projects we have to check that we have the right name of the project here and here now to create the migration file we need to call the command add migration then let's provide a name to this migration file so we can call it first migration then enter so now this migration file has been created and it allows us to create the products table that contains these columns so this file is available in our project into this new folder which is called migrations so we can find it just here now let's create the database table so here we need to call the command update database now the table has been created correctly let's take a look on server explorer then we need just to refresh our connection so here we can see that we have this table that contains these columns now let's test this application db context so let's go to program.cs so here we can see that we have this endpoint and when we go to the root of our application this method will be executed so now let's implement this method so first we need to request the application db context that we added to the service container so here let's add application db context let's call it context now we can use it to connect to the database so first let's create a new product so the product is of type product model that we created then let's initialize the different properties of this object so here we can initialize the name the brand category price description and created at so for created at it is equal to the current date now to add this product to the database we can use our context so here let's call context dot the name of the table which is products dot add and the product that we want to add which is this object then we need to save the modifications so let's call context dot save changes then we can read the products from the database and we can return them so here let's create a variable we can call it products so it is equal to our context dot products dot to list then let's return this object so here we can add a command so each time we send a request to this endpoint a new product will be created and the list of products will be returned now let's test the application so the first time we sent a request to this url a new product has been created and because it is the only available product we have a list of only one product now let's refresh the page so this time we have two products now i will show you how to integrate entity framework to asp.net application using database first approach so here let's select the second project let's go to package manager console and let's select the second project then to generate the db context class and the models from the database we need to use the command scaffold db context 
So the documentation of scaffold DB context command is available in this page. So the first parameter that we have to provide is the connection string and we can just provide the name of the connection string that is available in the appsettings.json file. The second parameter is the provider and because we need to connect to SQL server, the provider in our case is this value. Then we can provide the output dir. So output dir allows us to define the name of the folder that contains the domain models. Then we can use context dir to define the name of the folder where we need to save the db context class. And finally, we can use the context parameter to provide a name to our db context class. So the first parameter will be the name of the connection string that is available in appsettings.json. So here we have to add name equal to connection strings column default connection. So this is the name of the connection string that we added to appsettings.json. So here we have this connection string. Then we need to add the provider. So in our case, the provider is microsoft.entityframeworkcore.sql server. Then we need to create the domain models into the models folder. So here let's add a parameter called output dir and between double quotes we have to provide the name of the folder which is models. Then we need to save the db context class into a folder called services. So let's add minus context dir then between double quotes the name of the folder which is services. Then we need to call our db context class application db context. So let's add the parameter minus context, then the name of the db context class, which is application db context. Let's press enter. And here we have the scaffolded application db context class. We have two constructors, we have this products property, and we have this method that allows us to configure the application db context class. So we will use the SQL server database, and this is the name of the connection string. So this application db context class is available in the services folder. Then we have the models folder. And here we have the domain model. So here we have public properties that correspond to the different columns of the products table in the database. So because this application db context is already configured, we don't need to configure it in the program.cs file we need only to add it to the service container. So let's go to program.cs and let's add application db context to the service container. Now let's use this application db context. So we can request it inside this arrow function. Then let's read the products from the database. And finally, let's return the list of products. Now let's test the application. So here we are selecting the correct project. And here we have the list of products.